What's up, YouTube? Brian here. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where in every episode I'm always contending for the faith once for all delivered to the saints. And on this Thursday in the third week of Lent, we continue through the Gospel of Mark. We have a reading from a relatively modern, so to speak, church father of the faith. And of course, we continue with our Lenten catechesis, this time on the fourth and fifth petitions of the Lord's Prayer. Stick around. <laughs> So, for the sake of this reading from the Church Father today, uh, I think it's important to note that the Treasury of Daily Prayer offers an Old and a New Testament reading. And so, uh, if you don't maybe have the means to pick up the Treasury of Daily Prayer as a physical book, certainly uh, take a look at the Pray Now app and see if you can pick that up uh, for, for much cheaper if you're more digitally inclined. I have the app myself, uh, but I love uh, the, <laughs> the smell and the feel and the weight uh, and the ancientness of a book. So I just wanted to preface that this uh, reading from the Church Father is going to be in reference to Genesis chapter 39 and Joseph. But let's, uh, we're in the Gospel of Mark, uh, we're still in uh, Mark chapter 10, and we're going to hear some more words from Jesus. So let's get started. And they were bringing children to him that he might touch them. And the disciples rebuked them, but when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands on them. And as he was setting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and mother. And he said to him, Teacher, all these I have kept from my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You lack one thing. Go, sell all you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. Disheartened by the saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. And Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How difficult it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were amazed at his words, but Jesus said to them again, Children, how difficult it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. And they were exceedingly astonished and said to him, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man it is impossible, but not with God. For all things are possible with God. Peter began to say to him, See, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brother or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But for many who are first will be last, and the last first couple of thoughts on the, these words from Jesus. Uh, certainly, let the little children come to me. Now, this verse is often used by us Lutherans in reference to why we would have our children baptized. Uh, but, well, Jesus isn't talking about baptism here. Well, he's not not talking about it either. And these were little ones, little children and infants. And But the emphasis here. On Jesus' words, truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. How do children receive? It's given to them. And especially little children, they're incapable of even asking. It's simply given to them by a loving parent. That's how we are to receive the kingdom of God as a gift, as a free gift, not one we've asked for, not one we've merited, not one we've earned, not one we deserved, one that has been given to us solely out of the love of our Heavenly Father who sent His Son to die on the cross for us, to purchase for us that salvation. So this question then, 
Well, let's address the the man. The, the, you lack one thing. Go and sell all that you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Okay, so good works uh, do, in in a way, merit for us treasure in heaven, but that's not why we should do them. We should give to the poor and help the needy because they need our good works. Jesus then says, come, follow me. So if the man simply would have left everything and followed Jesus, like the disciples did, and they boasted, <laughs> didn't they, that they followed him, uh, he would have had eternal life. This is the, the greater... Uh, co eternal commandment, part of that, come, follow me. Now to Peter's question, because this is important. Who then, or then who can be saved? So I must have been saying it in a different translation. Who can be saved? To answer this question, Jesus says, with man, it is impossible, but not with God, for all things are possible with God. So, who can be saved? Jesus says clearly, you cannot save yourselves. If this is left up to you, to your works, to your worthiness, to your merit, to your asking me into your heart, for me, you declaring me to be your Lord, for you deciding uh, to follow me, uh, no. With you, this is impossible. You can't. But with God, all things are possible. So these great gospel words of Jesus, that the good news, the promise to be clung to by faith, is that especially even with little children, we should model ourselves after little children and receive freely from our Father, having not asked for it, but our Father who sees our great need as Jesus did with this, with this rich man, loved him and said, come, follow me. Our writing now is uh, from Paul Kretzmann. Now, um, <laughs> It's a modern name, isn't it? Uh, he was still written about a hundred years, or he was born about a hundred years before me. Uh, but still, this great cloud of witnesses that has gone before us doesn't always have to be as far back as the saints of the Old Testament. Uh, it can simply be someone who came before us, uh, as as one generation will proclaim to the next. So this writing is in reference uh, to the other reading for this day in Lent uh, from Genesis thirty nine. Commenting on the Old Testament reading, verse 20, And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in prison. The innocent young man was confined in the state prison, where the prisoners of the king, the criminals against the state, were kept. Thus many an innocent Christian has been obliged to suffer wrongfully, to be suspected and accused of crimes of various kinds. In spite of all that, however... The believers place their trust in the mercy of God. Verse 21, But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keepers of the prison. The hearts of men are in the hands of the Lord, and he can guide them like rivers of water. It was the mercy of the Lord which secured for Joseph the favor of the jailer himself, an officer under Pontifar. Verse 22, And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison, and whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. Although Joseph himself was a prisoner, the jailer's trust in him was so great that he gave him charge of all the prisoners and of all the work which the prisoners had to perform. Verse 23, The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand, with regard to all things which were expected of him, he placed implicit confidence in Joseph, because the Lord was with him, and that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. With a clear conscience and the Lord's favor on their side, the believers are able to endure not only false accusations, but even worse tribulations, the loss of liberty and life. Now, we continue with our Lenten catechesis on the fourth and fifth petitions of the Lord's Prayer. The fourth petition, give us this day our daily bread. With many words, one could list all the things that are included, like when we ask God to give us food and drink, clothing, house and home, and health of body, or when we ask that he cause the grain and fruit of the field to grow and mature well. Furthermore, we ask that he help us at home with good housekeeping 
and that he give and preserve for us a goodly wife, children, and servants. We ask that he cause our work, trade, or whatever we are engaged in to prosper and succeed, favor us with faithful neighbors and good friends and other such things. Likewise, we ask that he give wisdom, strength, and success to emperors, kings, and all estates, and especially to the rulers of our country, and to all counselors, magistrates, and officers. We ask that he give to subjects and the common people obedience, patience, and harmony in their life with one another. We ask that he would preserve us from all sports of disaster to body and livelihood like lightning, hail, fire, flood, poison, plague, cattle disease, water and bloodshed, famine, destructive beasts, wicked men, and so forth. It is well to impress all this upon the common people. These things come from God and must be prayed for by us. The fifth petition. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. It is not as though God did not forgive sin without and even before our prayer. He has given us the gospel in which is pure forgiveness before we prayed or ever thought about it. Romans 5.8 but the purpose of this prayer is that we may recognize and receive such forgiveness. We sin daily in word and deed, Genesis 6, 5, by what we do and fail to do, James 2, 15 through 16. By this, the conscience is thrown into unrest so that it is afraid of God's wrath and displeasure. So it loses the comfort and confidence derived from the gospel. Therefore, it is always necessary that we run here and receive consolation to comfort the conscience again. We pray. Lord Jesus Christ, whose grace always proceeds and follows us, help us to forsake all trust in earthly gain and to find in you our heavenly treasure. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins.